Welcome to Adapt Enclass, Maternity Nursing Enclass Review Questions, Practice Questions. What is this video is about? Concept Mastery. I'm trying to make Enclass and Nursing School on Maternity easy for you. This is video number 11. These are challenging questions, but it's all concept. Let's get to it. In each question, I'm going to give you a concept, and I want you to take a pen and paper, write them down. This is how you master the concept and the content for Nancy School and the Anklas. First question, a nurse is caring for a client in labor. This is labor and delivery question. How should the nurse interpret this fetal strip? What is that? This is what you have. This is all they will give you. Take your time, look at it. Every time they give you a strip, there are going to be a two reading. The top one is for the baby. And the bottom one is for the mother. We're just telling you the normal of contraction the mother is having within a certain time. Most of the time, this is 10 minutes. It's a 10 minutes a contraction collected. And out of that, you can see the corresponding fetal heart rate. What is happening? Is the baby decelerating or accelerating? Or the baby is fine. Based on the reading, you can figure out. How do you read them? Let me show you. Based on what they've given you, they ask you to interpret it. You got to look at the strip, and at the bottom, you say what? Five contraction. That's all you're looking for. If there is more than five contraction, wrong. Something is wrong. Then out of the contraction, look for corresponding baby heart rate. There is three contraction here. Mommy is doing okay. But as we contract, look at the baby heart rate. It comes down. This is deceleration. Mommy is not contracting, but there's also another deceleration. Here there's contraction corresponding with another deceleration. No contraction, but there's deceleration. This cannot be acceleration. Baby heart should go up. Late deceleration happen after mommy has contracted and at the peak and the heart rate come. It doesn't correspond to that. Variable deceleration means there's no correlation between contraction and deceleration. It can happen during contraction or deceleration can happen anytime. Early deceleration means deceleration happen right on the onset of contraction. Based on what we can see, the contraction and the deceleration are not in sync. Therefore, this is what we call variable deceleration. If you have issues with this, I have a bunch of views that you can watch on Fudo Heart Strips to master that. Check out that class for more content like that. Number two, a nurse obtain lab results for a client who suspects she's pregnant. The results show positive serum ACG. How should the nurse interpret this finding? What is the concept for this question? Write it down. What are presumptive? What are probable? And what are what positive pregnancy tests? or evidence of pregnancy. Now, what do we have? Go for the buzzword. As usual, write it down. This is the buzzword, positive serum ACG. I mean, we have a norma. Does this indicate a presumptive test? Does this indicate a probable test, a positive test, or a conclusive evidence of pregnancy? The best way to understand is like a vital sign. When we take your viral, we're taking an objective value. When you speak into us, that is a subjective value. And when we do exams and figure out, you use X-ray, CT scan, and other things, we are calling, we are referring to what? A positive evidence. Therefore, this is a lab work. And so the concept here is, if you take a lab work or the doctor examine you, then we have what we call objective value and that objective value is what a probable evidence of pregnancy if the mommy is talking that is presumptive if the doctor has to use an image like a ct scan ultrasound to look for the baby that's a positive sign therefore this is a probable sign beta acg is a probable sign a client in active labor is receiving pitocin, oxytocin, which finding required the nurse to stop the infusion. 
This is an English practice question on maternity nursing mastering concept. You have to know what are the indications and what are the complications associated with Pitocin. And when patient is receiving Pitocin, what do you look for? These are the keywords. Keywords for this is what? Your contraction, the duration of that contraction, one contraction to another, right? There's two things. There's frequency of contraction. That is how often do you contract? And the duration, how long is one contraction? The length of one contraction should not exceed 90 seconds. And the frequency, that means after one contraction, the next one should be at least two minutes. At least two minutes. So contraction every four minutes lasting 50 seconds. What do you think? That is within the range. We said what? At least two minutes. We're contracting every four minutes. And we shouldn't last 90 seconds. We're lasting 50 seconds. We're good. Heart rate of 130 with acceleration. Acceleration is good. And a fetal heart rate of 130, that's normal. Like I said, these are our concepts. I'm trying to give you every concept associated with maternity so that you don't struggle anymore so that you can be confident when you take the NCLEX or Nancy school exams. Contraction every 90 seconds, right? And lasting what, what, 100 seconds. Think about it. If your contraction is every 90 seconds, therefore it should be less than what, two minutes, that's bad. And if the duration is what, 100 seconds, it's more than 90 seconds, we get to intervene. Variability of six to 10 beats per minute is a good thing, therefore, what do you think? You can see that number three is a bad problem and we got to intervene. That's concept number three. Now concept number four is a dose calculation and dose calculation requires some critical thinking. But step back, if you're in nursing school or taking the ankle step back, let me show you how to calculate magnesium because it's a very high yield things you have to know. So we're going to read the question I'll highlight things that you have to pay attention to. The provider prescribed what? Magnesium sulfate, four gram IV bolus to be given over 20 minutes. That's the duration for a client in what? Severe preeclampsia. We're giving it as a bolus because patient need it as soon as possible. The pharmacy supply what? Magnesium 40 grams in a thousand ml of 0.9% normal saline. At what, what ml per hour rate should the nurse set the IV pump running to the nearest hold number? Look, don't worry about it. The way I answer this question is what? I ask myself, what is the prescribed dose? The prescribed dose is well, what were we prescribed? Four grams, okay, to be given over 20 minutes. And what is the available dose? What is that's what the pharmacy gave you? It gave you what? 40 grams per thousand ml. Forget about the normal saline. We don't need it. We just need the volume. Now, they want you to do what? ml per hour. That's what I pay attention to. Therefore, I need an answer choice ml every hour. That's all. And I'm going to convert my answers into ml every hour. ml has to be on top. And I see ml here as, at the bottom. I'm going to put it at the top. So that will come first. The available dose over 40 grams. When you multiply it by what? The prescribed dose. The prescribed dose is what? Four gram over what? 20 minutes. But we need this to be an hour. So we have 60 minutes over one hour. You're done. Then you cancel it. A gram cancel a gram. This cancel this. And then when you calculate, you have 1,000 times 4 times 6, 60, over 40 uh, uh, and 20. Therefore, if you do the calculation, 300 ml over an hour, this is your answer. Therefore, she needs to set the rate at 300 ml per hour. This is how you calculate those calculations for magnesium. If you need more, slow down the video, look at it. But I have a bunch of what? Those calculation questions on the, on the YouTube, on Adapt and Class. That will help you master this. And so that's the right answer. 
So it changed the, everything into ML per hour. That is the concept. This is also a concept I want you to pay attention to. Sometimes you don't hear about this, but this is the way uh, usually in real life. And next is re reviewing the results of a three hour oral glucose storyline test for a client who is what? 28 weeks pregnant. We do this because we worry about your one hour was wrong. And therefore we want to confirm diagnosis of gestational diabetes. So what do you do? You're going to fast. She fast and then give in glucose, right? The first glucose was obtained fast in 992, right? And then after one hour, we get 182. You expect them because they get glucose is going to go up as it goes by. So one hour later, 182. At two hours, we have 160. At three hours, that's the final duration of the test. We have 138. There is a concept. I want you to write it down. And don't forget, whenever you see a question, when you're doing three-hour test, there's a condition that has to be made. Write this down. Fasting glucose has to be less than 95. At one hour, we want the glucose to be less than, less than 180. At two hours, we want it to be less than 155. At three hours, we want it to be less than 140. If you only mix one, they're going to repeat the test again. But if you have two abnormal findings, this is a diagnosis of what? Gestational diabetes. What is the problem? A fasting glucose, if you look at it, is what? 92. It was good. So check. At one hour, it was 182. She failed yet. At three hours, it was 160. She also failed here. So we have two fail. At three hours, was able to come down to less than 140. So that's good. But she has two abnormal normies. This is a definitive diagnosis of gestational diabetes. If she has one abnormal normal, we will repeat it again. So document as normal is wrong. Repeat the three hour in a week is wrong because there's two abnormal normies. Notify the provider for gestational diabetes evaluation. That's the right answer. Encourage the client to restrict calorie for 24 hours is not the right thing. This is question six. How is your score so far? Put it in the comments. Let me know which question was troublesome to you. But this question is asking about labor. You have to know through and false labor because you got to teach the patient which finding indicate a true labor. And let's admit a client at 39 weeks. Stop the video, answer it, and let me know what you think. Put that your answer in the comment. Contraction stop with rest. Pain begin in the back and radiate to the abdomen. Contraction are irregular and intermittent. No cervical changes okay. This is a key and close question. You have to write it down and know the difference. Through labor, no matter what you do, the pain never go away. You change position, pain never go away. There's going to be effacement and dilation. And the pain start from the back to the front. That's the concept. I want you to write it down as part of the things you should know for through labor. Therefore, which answer choice you think is the right answer? Number two is the right answer. And so the content is contraction has to be regular. It changes with time in terms of effacement and dilation and radiating from the back to the front. This is adult NCLEX. This is maternity nursing. This is NCLEX practice question for nursing students and then for preparing for the NCLEX. We are on number seven. And this is teaching the client about what? Breast self-examination. This is big. You have to know. These health promotion things, you should not take it lightly. They are common English questions. With statement indicate correct understanding, you have to teach the patient how to do self-breast examination. I should perform the exams the week before my period. Do you think that is the right teaching? The exams is best done right after my period ends. I will check my breast daily at the same time. I only need to examine if I feel pain and discharge. During, during your cycle, it's very, very difficult to do breast exams due to hormonal change. But as soon as you have a the hormonal level come down and everything is normal. Therefore, it's easy to do your breast exams. Therefore, what is the best teaching you should teach them? Do it right after the period ends. This allows them to be able to do a better self-breast examination. 
That is the concept. Omono changes are lowest after your menses, and the breast is less tender. So the key, key teaching for this is most accurate time is to do it after the end of your menses. This is another concept, labor and delivery. Which of the following, the next shoe is suspect. Concept associated with uh, intrapartal issue. The client attempting a vaginal birth after C-section. That is the buzzword, telling you that something you should focus on it. C-section and then attempting previous C-section and attempting what? Vaginal birth. That's a clue. Client report what? Sudden onset of abdominal pain. Absence of contraction, fetal or heart deceleration. Which of the following the nation suspect? Even if you have no clue, something should tell you that placenta previa has nothing to do with previous C section. Placenta abruption has nothing to do with previous C section. And cord prolapse has nothing to do with previous C section. And that is the content, that is the concept. Uterine contraction is the key condition associated with the prior C-section. But even if you don't know that one too, sudden onset of abdominal pain, absence of contraction and fetal artery deceleration are concepts associated with uterine rupture. And therefore, those are the things you have to pay attention to. Which of the following client is at higher risk for what? Preterm labor. The key word is preterm labor. The nurse is a 13th of a client in third trimester. We have 32 weeks, 34 weeks, 36 weeks, 30 weeks. Then you said they are pregnant. What is the only thing difference? Multiple gestation, patient and gestational diabetes, patients smoke one pack per day in the past, and they have varicose vein. We know smoking is a risk factor, but just because you've smoked before doesn't mean you're going to have preterm labor. It's active. Smoking is the key. The younger you are, less than 70, and the older you are, the more likely to have preterm labor because your cervix is becoming competent. But if you have multiple gestation, guess what? Another risk factor for, get, for preterm labor. And therefore, that's the right answer. And the last question. This can trap you. This can be a trap. This anklets will love it. This Nursing school will love it, but what? Normal findings are always a key thing you're supposed to pay attention to. I'm giving it away, but I want you to know. A nurse is caring for a client who is for two days postpartum. The client urine output over 24 hours is what? 2,800 ml, which nursing action is most appropriate. Encourage the client to increase fluid intake, notify the provider immediately, document the finding, encourage the client to restrict fluid. What do you think? If you can see it, fine. Just easy way to know what is going on, write this down. 280 over 24. This is way more than, if you look at it, it's way more than you needed every hour, right? If you divide 280 over 24, that is what? 116, at least minimum 110 every hour. That means the patient is voiding 110, at least 110 every hour. That's a lot of urine. But this is normal postpartum. The first two to five days, your urine output should go between 2,800 to 3,800 ml because of the diuresis associated and you retain all the fluid. So you need to get rid of it. So encourage the client to increase fluid. Unless there is the evidence of dehydration, you don't need to do that. Notify the provider. This is an expected finding. Document the finding. It's a good answer. Encourage the client to restrict fluid. No. This is going to cause the problem. And therefore, the best answer is number three. It's a concept that is it's good to know because postpartum, you're going to have postpartum diuresis two to five days and therefore if you continue you're going to get dehydrated that means if you're making more than three thousand ml that's a problem this is adapting class and class practice question maternity nursing concept for nursing school and for the endless thank you for watching and follow the series take care of yourself bye